Okay, enough theory. I'm sure everyone is eager for developing some Spring Boot applications. In this quick demo, we're creating a Hello World Spring Boot application. When client access localhost 8080 greeting, your application will respond with a web page that displays HTML. The body of the HTML will contain a greeting, Hello World. This is the default behavior of your application. Client can also customize the greeting with an optional name parameter in the query string. The URL might be localhost 8080 greeting question mark name equal to Harry. Then your application will respond with a web page that displays HTML. The body of the HTML will contain a greeting, hello Harry. While I'm using Spring Boot, I want you guys to think about how to use GSP and Java Servlet to do this. Then you will realize how easy it is to use Spring Boot. So let's get to it. First, let's create a Spring Boot project in IntelliJ. Create a new project. IntelliJ has a built-in support for Spring Boot project. It is called Spring Initializer. Well, this is a typo here, but that's the name for Spring Boot Initializer. I'm using Java 12. If you're using Java 11, 13, or 14, no problem. But you have to use Java 8 or above. OK, so the default service URL is good. So this is a starter service URL. What happened here is IntelliJ will create this project from this URL and import it in. OK, so we're going to click Default. Next, let's give a name to the group. Let's give a name to the artifact. Let's call this Spring Boot Demo. It is a Maven project. We're using Java. You also can pick Kotlin or Groovy, but Java is our language. The default packaging is OK. It is a jar file. Now, alternative is war. If you remember what does war mean or war. So this is a web archive file. The default Java version is 8. OK. And we're picking 11. Uh, since there are no 12 here, we have to pick 11. Later on, we can change this to 12 in the palm.xml. OK, so this is the version, name, description, package. Everything looks good. We can click Next. OK, here we're going to pick the dependencies that our project depends on. Now, if you remember, there are many, many modules in Spring Framework. You don't have to use all of them, right? So here we're going to pick only two. The first module we're going to depend on is Spring Web MVC. Once you click, this is the selected dependencies. Right now, there's only one. Then we're going to pick one template engine. Spring Boot supports four template engines. There are Timeleaf, FreeMaker, Mustache, and Groovy. And we're going to use Timeleaf. So Timeleaf is used to render HTML to our client. So we're not using GSP. We're using Timeleaf as alternative. OK, later on, we're going to use Spring Security. And if your Spring product needs to communicate with SQL, then you can also add SQL. And here is support for no SQL. And this is messaging, I.O., operations, testing, Spring Cloud. There are so many modules they can use. OK, but for now, we're only using Spring Web on their web and Timeleaf on their template engines. OK, next. OK, so everything's good. Now here, I'm going to change it to my own directory. Now, in your case, feel free to put it anywhere you want. OK, just make sure that here you're creating this folder or directory if it's not there. OK, finish. So IntelliJ has created this project for us. Let's take a look at the structure of this project. So let me expand this. For people who are familiar with Apache Maven, Spring Boot project is actually a Maven project. 
you also saw a Maven option when we create this project, right? So this is really a Maven project. So let's take a look at the project structure. It is important to understand how Spring Boot organize your files. Application source code is placed under src forward slash main forward slash java. Test code is placed under src forward slash test forward slash java. And then non-Java sources, for example, property files, HTMLs, JavaScripts, CSS are placed under src forward slash main forward slash resources. Right now, there is a package under main java. If I expand it, there's already a class. Double click. So the name of this class is Spring Boot Demo Applications. This is the entry point of your Spring Boot project. It has a main method. So if I click this play button here, this line gets executed. Let's take a look at all those files that Spring Boot project generated for us. There are so many files. So first, there is something called mvnw and also mvnw.cmd. These are Maven wrapper scripts, and you can use these scripts to build your Java project even if you don't have Maven installed on your machine. Palm.xml. This is the Maven build specification. It is very similar to package.json in npm of a node project. We'll take a look at this file later on. And as I said before, Spring Boot demo application is the Spring Boot main class that bootstraps the entire project. Application.properties. This file is initially empty. So if I open it, there's nothing over there. This is a place where you can specify configuration properties. For example, where is my database? What is the username and password of the database? You can put any properties that you do not want to hard code in your source code. Static folder is where you can put any static contents. For example, images, CSS style sheets, JavaScripts, HTMLs, and so forth. It is initially empty. Templates is where you will place all template files that will be used to render content to the browser. In this demo, we're going to define one time leaf template and store it in the templates folder. Under test Java, in this package, there is a test class. This is a simple test class that ensures that the Spring application context loads successfully. Later on, we will add some test cases under test Java and this package. OK, now you have a good understanding of the product structure of a Spring Boot project. Let's work on the task. When user type localhost 8080 forward slash greeting question mark name equal to Harry, then our application will serve this request, retrieve name equal to Harry, and print hello Harry or hello world if user doesn't supply any uh, name parameter to the front end. First, let me close everything here. OK, let me create a package. New package. We call this controller. So we're going to define many controllers in it. Well, in this case, we only define one controller. So right click, new a Java class. Let's call this greeting controller. So this controller is responsible for receiving the incoming request localhost 8080 forward slash greeting, and then respond to it. First, we're going to add an annotation at controller. This annotation is from Spring Framework dot stereotype. Okay. And in the greeting controller, we're going to define a method that handles this incoming request forward slash greeting, right? Okay, so let's call it. Greeting. Then how do we let Spring Boot know that we want to use this method to handle localhost 8080 forward slash greeting? We have to have something called a request mapping. So we're going to add an annotation to annotate this method in this controller. It is called at get mapping. So get here means HTTP get method. So this method is going to serve an HTTP GET 
request. And the URL is forward slash greeting. Now, if the user types localhost 88 greeting in the browser and press enter, when the request comes to our Spring Boot, Spring Boot will redirect, will forward this request to this greeting method in this greeting controller class. Okay, so remember that first we have to use controller to annotate this entire class. And inside, you can define as many methods as you want. But every time you define method, make sure you have a mapping. Now, so here is get. Now, of course, we also can have post mapping. We can have put mapping. We also have delete mapping. But in this case, we're using get mapping because the incoming HTTP request is a get HTTP method. All right. So uh, to make sure you know what happened here, let me put this comment here. So this request will be mapped to this method. All right. Now remember our goal. If this request URL optionally has a parameter equal to Harry, then our method needs to retrieve this value, okay, and then return hello Harry in HTML. Okay, so here's how we retrieve it. Now, do you remember how we retrieve request parameter in Servlet? Now in Servlet, we're using HTTP server request. So request dot get parameter, then name, right? But here there is an easy way to do it. Spring Boot can automatically retrieve this name and assign it to the formal parameter of this greeting method. Okay, so here's how we do it. But we have to tell Spring Boot how to do it. So at request param, okay, well, so this is interesting. This time we're using this annotation to annotate a formal parameter. Okay, string name. Okay, next we're gonna have a model. I'm gonna explain what this model is later on, okay? So model. But this is not enough. We have to tell Spring Boot which parameter we're interested in. For example, maybe we can have more parameters. For example, here I'm gonna have, uh, I don't know, TPA equal to four, right? So in this case, there are two parameters. We have to let Spring Boot know that which parameter we're interested in. So here I'm gonna type name. Now this name is what is the name of the request parameter we're interested in? It happens to be the same, which is also name. Now, there are more options here. Uh, those are all optional, but I just wanted you to know. Required is false, because remember, uh, this is just an option. So user doesn't have to send name equal to somebody. Okay. The third one is the default value. In other words, if the user does not send a query string, then the default value for the name is, let's call it world. So let me make it a little larger. Now this line is too long, so I'm gonna break it here. All right, so this is interesting. Uh, we have three annotations. Now this entire thing is annotation, and those are the parameters of this annotation. And here we're using add request param to annotate string name, a formal parameter. And here, annotation is annotating this entire method. This annotation is for this entire class. Okay, all those annotations, they are from Spring Framework. Okay. Up until now, Spring Boot will retrieve Harry and assign this Harry to name. So in here, if you type name, well, in the console, Harry will be printed. So that's how we get parameters in Spring Boot. Okay, it's much easier than to use request.getParameter in Servlet. Okay, now remember our task. Uh, we're going to return an HTML, and in the HTML, we're going to print hello, whatever you put in the name. Okay, so this is how we do it. We're going to use the second parameter called model dot add attribute. Name. And then return index. Well, the first time I learned Spring Boot, I'm a little bit confused. What is this model thing here? Okay, and why we need this model? And once we add attribute to this model, then we're gonna return a string. Well, that's interesting. So what does this mean? Before I explain this, so let's kind of refresh our memory. In servlet programming, we define servlets to handle requests, retrieve parameters, talk to database, and prepare the content. Then how do we pass this prepared data to GSP? The syntax is request 
dot set attribute. So we set all the attributes to the request object, and then we use request dot get request dispatcher dot forward. So we're forwarding everything to a JSP file. And in the JSP file, we can render everything in HTML and send it back to the front end. Right? So in Spring Boot, it is very similar. But this time, we're not using requests. Well, actually, behind the scene, they're doing the request. But they have something called a model. And the model can supply attributes or values used for rendering a time leaf view. So to provide a view with usable data, we simply just add this data as an attribute of this model. And time leaf view can retrieve everything you set in this model. And you can think of this as the controller and also the time leaf view, they share this model. They have access to the same model. So one thing, this, this guy is putting things to model and, and time leaf template is retrieving the value that's saved by this controller. Then what is line 15? This index. Well, it looks like this is the name of HTML file, like index.jsp or index.html. That's right. This is the logical name for a time leaf template. Next, let's create index.html time leaf template. If you create a time leaf template in Spring Boot project, the file should be placed under resources templates. So let's create a template. Right click, new HTML file. Let's call it index. The name of the file should be the same as this return string, index, because this index is the logical name for this template. Well, now this is not a template. It's just a regular HTML file. Then how do we make this HTML file a time leaf template? We need to add something inside this HTML tag. We're going to add an XML namespace. And it is th. Now th stands for time leaf. And we have it point to the website of time leaf. After we add this namespace, this HTML file becomes a time leaf template that we can use all the features provided by time leaf. In this case, I will only show you one. Now, do you still remember our task? This controller receives this incoming request with name equal to Harry. It retrieves the value of the name, put it in a model, and then return this index. Now, this index refers to this index.html template. So controller is putting things to the model. Since both the template and the controller have access to this model object, so index can retrieve the value of name and render it on HTML page. So let's do it. We're going to put hello Harry in a P tag. We can print hello, no problem, because that's a static, that's not changing. But how do we retrieve Harry or the value of the name? So here's the dialect that we're going to use. And this dialect is provided from template. It is not HTML. So here's the syntax. th, that's a namespace. Under th, there is a text. And in the text, we're going to define what will be printed inside this open and closing p tag. Okay, in this case, we're going to first print hello as is. The space. Then string concatenation, we're going to print the value in name. How do we retrieve the value from model? Time leaf provides this syntax. Dollar sign, open and closing braces. And inside, we're going to put the attribute name, which is name. Okay. Now, as you can see, IntelliJ is providing me this attribute that is in the model. So this M is the model here. Okay. Remember, in controller, name is an attribute. Okay. And here, we're retrieving that name. So this name and this name, they mean the same thing. Okay. Okay, and after this, we're going to print an exclamation mark. All right.
we're done. How do we launch a Spring Boot project? Well, there are two ways you can do it. Okay, but here I'm going to show you the simple way. It is simply just press this play button. Okay, so run it. As you can see here, Spring Boot is launching. Now we're using version 2.2.6 and all those chatters is preparing. And down here you can see Tomcat started on port 8080. Okay. So let's go to Google Chrome and type localhost greeting. Now first, we're not going to pass any name parameter. So hello world will be printed because the default value of name is world, right? So press enter. We have hello world. And this time I'm going to have some query string name equal to Harry. Also, I'll press F12. So we're going to monitor the network. Okay. So we got hello Harry, and this is the response that this browser is receiving from the Spring Boot application. As you can see, an entire HTML page is sent back from the Spring Boot application. Then you may wonder, where is that th text equal to dollar sign name? Where is it? Okay, so let's go back here. It turns out that Timeleaf provides a template engine. So before we send data from Spring Boot project to the browser, this engine would take this template, in this case, this index.html, parse it, and then produce web content, which is being served. So think of this as a placeholder. Okay, so this one will be first fed to a template engine, and template engine will replace those with the value we find in the model. So what you see on the front page is just a hello world or hello Harry, not this dialect. Okay, I'm sure many students realize that, okay, Timeleaf is really similar to GSP. That's right. Both of them, they are server-side rendering technologies. So the server is preparing a complete HTML and send it back to the browser. So we're not using Ajax, we're not using JSON at all. So if you are a big fan of GSP, well, actually in most cases, for small project or medium project, using GSP can be very easy. I would recommend not using GSP, but using Timeleaf because they are very similar. But Timeleaf provides a natural template. That means, as you can see here, this is .html and everything is in HTML. But if you're using GSP, then you have to work in index.jsp, okay? Because most people know more HTML than GSP. So I highly recommend that you use Timeleaf if you want to use a GSP-like technology.